So we're back out on site today and I'm with Graham. Graham is GS Electrical, which I just think is one letter away from sheer perfection on the side of his van. But what am I here to see today, Graham? Live testing at the board. And which test am I really interested in showing to the, the wider public? RCD testing at the board. So we're actually going to carry out a three lead test on the RCDs in the board itself? Yes. And what type of RCDs have we got in there? RCBOs. So we've got a number of RCBOs in the board and we're going to show you how quickly, hopefully, that you can carry out the RCD test from actually within the board itself. Yes. Let's see that in this video presentation. So Graham's going to show us the live test room within the consumers unit in this video presentation. But what are you going to do first for me, Graham? So I want to switch off the main switch. But before I do that, I'm going to switch off each individual circuit. The reason for doing that is so that there's no power coming through the main switch when I do it, when I do turn it off. With, with regards to these RCBOs, I've got the RCD test button, so I can already carry out a functionality test on those uh, by switching the, the, the test button. Brilliant. So by pressing the, the test button on the RCBOs, we're actually starting the testing process already because this is part of your functional testing and it means the main switch won't be on full load when you isolate. Is that correct? Absolutely. All right, let's do that then. So the number one's off. And now I can turn off the main switch. Fantastic. So next thing we'll do, we'll take the consume unit cover off and we'll start those tests. Move the consume unit cover and we're now ready to prove that we're actually isolated the distribution board at the bottom of the double pole switch. Can you show me that please, Graham? Sure. So first of all, we're going to test his voltage indicator to prove it works. It does. And then we're going to probe on at the bottom of the double pole switch to prove that it is isolated. So it's on neutral first, followed by line, no volts, comes off line, off neutral. It's gone on the earth bar, and neutral, no volts, off the neutral, off the earth bar. And then finally, it's gonna go onto the earth bar, onto the line conductor, and no volts, comes off the line and off the earth bar. And then finally, he's going to just recheck his proving unit, uh, sorry, his voltage indicator on his proving unit to prove it works. Are you happy the bottom of that switch has isolated the consumer's unit? Yes. And now we're going to secure the isolation with a padlock and sign and replace the plastic bar over the buzz bar next. According to BS7671, Graham, what's the first live test we're going to carry out? Supply polarity. We are. Where are we going to carry out that test? Uh, at the top of the double pole switch. We are. Let's get ready and do that test for me, please. Okay, we're showing you again rechecking our voltage indicator and we're going to test first of all between neutral and line so he's on neutral first and then line and we show 230 volts we come off line and off neutral we're now going to connect between the earth bar and neutral so we're on the earth bar and neutral and you find we get the beep noise because we've got a tncs earthing arrangement we come off the neutral and then the earth bar and then we're on the earth bar and line we should find 230 volts again we've got 230 volts Graham 230 volts and then we come off the line and off the earth bar what test have we now completed Graham supply polarity we have often missed in industry that's the first live test according to BS 7671 Graham has performed that test he's now just going to show you that he's going to test his proving unit and voltage indicator again so into his proving unit and his voltage indicator on the last part of the test so Graham has disconnected the 16 mil earthing conductor in order that we can carry out the external earth fault loop impedance test. We've disconnected it, Graham, for what reason? So that there are no parallel earth paths created by gas and water bonding. We have. The instrument is set to line and protective earth and we're on two lead high. Can you carry out that test for me now, please, Graham? So it's connected on the earthing conductor first. And he's gonna probe onto the top of the main switch onto the line conductor. And we got a reading of 0 0.22 ohms. What's the maximum external earth fault looping pins for a TNCS earthing arrangement, Graham? 0 0.35 ohms. So are we accept in the reading that we got? That's fine. So we're happy with that reading. We're ready for the next test. So Graham's going to now put the 16 mil earthing conductor back into consuming unit. What are you going to use in order to make sure you get it back to manufacturer's required requirements? A torque screwdriver. Brilliant. Let's do that then, Graham. So 
that's in and connected properly and we're ready to move on to the next test. Graham, what testing are you going to carry out now for me? Uh, PFC. And we're going to test first of all between which conductors? Uh, line and neutral. We can see he set his instrument up to test between line and neutral, so we're ready to go. So we're on neutral first, and then we'll go on to the line two lead high lead test. What was our reading, Graham? Uh, 1.03 kiloamps. Okay. Graham, what's the next part of the test for prospective fault current? Earth fault current. Okay, let's do that next. You can see he's changed his instrument now to line and protective earth. So it's gone on the earth bar first, and then the line conductor. Again, two lead high. And this time, what reading we get, Graham? 985 amps. Of the two readings you get, which one you record? The highest. And that was the one that we tested first. Thank you, Graham. So of those two readings we've just taken, Graham, the highest one was just a little over a thousand amps. What's the breaking capacity of the incoming supply authority's fuse at this installation? 33 kiloamps. And what's the breaking capacity of the devices in circuit, your RCBOs? Six kiloamps. So therefore, are you happy with the fact that just a little over a thousand amps can be cleared by those devices? Yes, they can. So Graham's going to show us how to perform the RCD test within the consume unit itself. We have the main switch now in the on position and only the circuit under test. In this case, which circuit are we going to do the RCD test on first, Graham? The cooker. We are going to do it on the cooker circuit. So rather than going to the circuit, taking off the plate and doing a three lead test there, Graham's going to perform the RCD test on auto, set to 30 milliamps, actually within the consume unit itself. Let's see that test. Goes so on neutral first and then line. I'll help him by pressing the test button. It will run through the sequence now. So that's the test completed and see how quickly it was done. We now scroll back through the results. The first one is at half times where nothing happened. So in other words, we passed 15 milliamps or 30 milliamp RCDs and nothing happened. We did it at one times at zero degrees, we got 8.8 .8 milliseconds. And then at 180 for one times, we got 18.5. Which of those would we record, Graham? The highest. What's the maximum milliseconds disconnection time it can be? 300. And we're well within that. We now go to five times. At zero degrees, we got 8.38 milliseconds. And 18.2 milliseconds at 180 degrees. Of the two readings, which one do we record? Highest. What's the maximum for five times? 40. 40 watt. Milliseconds. It is, yeah, 40 milliseconds, and we would record them. We're now going to go and show you again on another circuit, perhaps we'll choose a lighting circuit, and show you how quickly you can achieve all the RCD test results, in this case for RCBOs, within the consumer unit itself. So we've worked our way down off camera, and now we're at the lighting circuit at the end, and we'll show you how quickly you can do the same test on the lighting circuit. Saves you going to the lighting fitting, unscrewing or taking down the fitting in order to connect your three leads and do your RCD test. So let's do the lighting circuit for me, Graham. So neutral first again. It's gone online, I'll help him out just for speed by pressing his test button. And we can see how quickly we've carried out the RCD test on a lighting circuit from within the consumer unit itself. We scroll through, pick up the results, we record them in our test paperwork, and that's it for the test within the consumer unit itself. Graham's now got a choice after carrying out a measured external uh, fault loop impedance if he wants to add that to his measured R1 plus R2 readings done dead in order to calculate circuits total uh, fault loop impedance, in other words the ZS of the circuits, or whether he wants to make a decision to measure some of those. So we've shown how quickly you can carry out an RCD test within the consumer's unit, and especially where there's RCBOs, and especially where you've got to carry out that test many times. Thank you, Graham. So Graham, this is lovely to see. So I can see you've put on some stickers on the exterior of the consumer unit on completing all your tests. Can you just explain to me what you've actually put on the outside of this consumer unit for us? Here we have the uh, decal that, that indicates two, two different color wiring systems, the durable sticker for testing, um, RCD test button, decal and dates of installation and next inspection. Next inspection maximum gap was how many years? 10 years. 
it's lovely to see that you've actually left a sticker there with all the test results on the exterior of the consumer unit as something often missed in industry and it's lovely to see you've done that graham thank you very much well i think that went fantastically well i'd like to thank you graham for that how do you think it went yeah really good um the rcd testing at the board saves time massively obviously not having to go out into the installation and take covers off to do the test there and that's a little tweak for me because oh, maybe old school that I would have been going out three lead testing at lighting points at the cooker etc and Graham said yeah, you come along and watch me do it mate you know I'll do them from the board which is you know just adds another string to everyone's bow so when we're out there in industry we can carry out the RCD test inside the consumers unit along with we did the external fault loop impedance perspective fault current test we proved polarity. isolation yeah polarity of supply so all those tests carried out on the board saves us a huge amount of time and then we said that whether we add together the ZE uh, to R1 plus R2 in order to get ZS, do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a choice then, we? whether we want to do that or go out and measure them. But I think the RCD part of that video saves everybody in industry a lot of time. Thanks a lot, Graham, for that. And we get this moment now, don't we? We get to do the, well, we hope this video has been some help. Well, we almost <laughs> <did it. laughs>